Number 16, the benefits of salvation. Now understand, Scripture is our source for all of these understandings. You can't get any understanding about God outside of Scripture or that is detached from Scripture. If it's not scriptural, if it's not biblical, then you can't believe it. You can't trust it. You can't take that to God then and say, God, this is, this is my basis for my argument. This is my basis for my legal uh, demands or my legal uh, my case. You can't take that if it's not scripturally based. So everything we're going to talk about is scripturally based. And one thing that you always see in scripture everywhere, everywhere the people of God, everywhere the people had a connection with God, a covenant with God, a relationship with God, there are several things that absolutely always are included between those people and God. And if you have a connection with God today through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, these five things that we're going to talk about, there's many other things, but these five high points are included in your life today, and you can receive them at any time. God's never holding them back from you. In 2 Peter 1, 1 through 5, Simon Peter, a servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. That's where you start. You need to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. You need to be filled with the knowledge of God. Get the grand scheme of things. Don't just get stuck in one tiny corner of doctrinal error that says God isn't providing anymore. How, how in the world did you come to that? You didn't get that from the scriptures. Every people, all covenants for God, with God, all had provision in them. And they all had, let me just go through these things, they all knew God. If you have a covenant with God, it's because God knew you and you knew God. You Somebody had responded to God's word and a relationship was birthed. Abraham heard God and a relationship of obedience on Abraham's part was birthed. So the people of God know God. God defends his people. God always provides for his people. God always heals his people. In every covenant, at all times, God has always provided and God has always healed. God has always defended and God has always honored his people. He said, out of you, man, people are going to, you're going to be lifted up above all the people of the earth. Every nation is going to look at you and say, look what God has done. Wow, that's just amazing. And they're going to know that God is among you. They're going to know that God is with you. Just like when they were coming out of Egypt, all the other nations feared them because these people know the true God. Whatever we've got, I don't even know. But what these people have is real. And God honored them and lifted them up in the sight of all nations. And it was because they knew God. Not because they were blessed, not because they were healed, not because they were prosperous, but because they knew God. And because they knew God, all of these other things were provided for them. This is a key understanding. Don't get your eyes on the things of this earth. Uh, God will... God will bless you and God will keep you. But you need to understand that God is the reward. When God spoke to Abraham, he says, I am your exceeding great reward. Not the things. He had the things. Things come and go. Things come and go with persecution, with wilderness periods that people or nations go through. People, things grow old. Uh, things get rusty. Moth and rust corrupts. And things come and go. But the relationship with God, that's the key part. Knowing God, having God honor you, and having God lift you. So don't get your eyes on the things of this world. Have your eyes on things of God. Have your eyes, because life and godliness are provided for. Life and godliness here in the verses of Scripture are always provided for. God always provides for life and godliness. Life, what you've got on this earth, what you need to live, what you need for your provision. When he, Jesus said to pray, he said, pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The kingdom of God, the power of God come onto this earth. But then he also said, pray, we need daily bread. We need that provision. We need the earthly things as well. When Jesus died on the cross, there was his body broken for the things of this earth that we need. The healing, the provision, the things that our body needs. But he says our blood, his blood was shed 
for our justification. His blood was shed. This is the new covenant, the new testament. This is the new agreement with man and God. This is what gives you life. If you are in a place where you have chosen, I've not done what God has commanded me to do, and you have refused, then in Jesus' name I command you to repent and get right with God so that His blessing can come back into your life. You can be underneath the Lordship and the command of Jesus Christ, and you can once again be flourishing and be a witness in this earth to the goodness and mercy of God. Let's have a look at what the book says. Everywhere God commands, everywhere people of God join together with God, everywhere there's a covenant with God, these things are provided. Psalm 103, 1 through 7. My soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Remember, this is the Old Testament. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and mercies. Deuteronomy 28 talks about the healing. Uh, the, God's going to take all these diseases away from you. God is always healed. God is always blessed in every covenant that he has made with mankind. In the New Testament, it doesn't lower the blessing. In the New Testament, it steps up the blessing of God. We have freedom in the new birth. When Christ comes in, it explodes on the inside of us. New birth, new life, new revelation. We can see the kingdom of God. We can see what God has provided, and it opens our eyes to new revelations and new depths of God's blessing, new understandings of how God's blessed. And he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And we are now ambassadors for Christ. Now we give out of that blessing. We give out of that position of sonship, of power, of being empowered, and then we give it out. This is one of the most amazing things about God, is he has made us ambassadors. He's taken the least, and the worst, and the lost, and he has made them leaders in what he's doing in the earth. And he's put these things on the inside of us. Mankind was always fighting and striving and struggling to be right with God. And the law said, man, we could never do it. We could never do it. But what Christ has done, he's made it possible for us to do it. He did it for us. And now in Galatians 5, 22 through 25, the fruit of the Spirit is on the inside. It was the evil that was on the inside coming out and destroying our lives. But now it's meekness, temperance, faith, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering, peace, joy, love, all this on the inside overwhelming us and bubbling up and, and, and being that amazing blessing. And don't get stuck on just the character. I know a lot of people just get stuck on character uh, because it is so glorious. It is so amazing. But God has so much more to pour out. But the promise... To proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prisons, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Those are all the promises. And when Jesus comes, the reality looks just like this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. But let me warn you, never get your eyes on the things. Always keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Never get your eyes on things. Have this be the rule of your priorities. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above, from your Father in heaven. And he's never going to vary from this, and he's never going to wander from this. He always wants you blessed, healed, protected, and glorifying him among the nations. As you receive these benefits and you pour out his love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.